Hey, rock stars! Welcome to another No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. We are going to rock the house because this one is special. This is the hundredth episode. We're going to give you guys the top ten, almost like Ten Commandment, you know, clips, uh, tactics, strategies uh, from the hundred um, podcasts that we've done. I'm super pumped about it, and uh, I guess I'm going to leave these off with this. Thank you, thank you very much for attending this podcast, for making this real, and I will see you on the flip side. Enjoy the tips, enjoy the tricks, enjoy moving your business forward. Until right now, this very moment, contractors have always been on their own, not as tradespeople, but being alone and knowing how to take their business to the next level. They call us working class, they call us blue collar. They say that we don't have the smarts to become the business owner that we're meant to be. That is such bullshit. You have the ability. You're more than any of that. The question really is where do you get the insights that you need specific to contracting to systemize your business so you can get your profits to pay for your freedom. I'm Andrew Houston. I'm gonna show you how to make more profits, how to get more control, how to get more freedom in the simplest, quickest way possible without any of that bullshit. Welcome to the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. Listen up, level up, and if you learn something, like the video, subscribe to the channel, change your business, change your life. All right, everybody, welcome to the 100th episode. Actually, I think it's the 104th episode uh, of the No Bullshit Podcast for Contractors. And I want to make this episode all about you guys. So the reality of the situation is we wouldn't have been able to get to this 100th episode if it wasn't for you guys, for you guys following us, for you guys, you know, sharing our podcast with others, uh, you guys getting on our Instagram. We you know we got over 20,000 people following us on Instagram. We've got, I think, approaching, you know, over 10, uh, if not uh, approaching 15,000 people in our, uh, you know, the Profitable Contractors Association. And we are just growing and growing and growing. And if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be growing like this. So I can't thank you enough for myself, for my team, uh, for, you know, all the support that you guys have given us. You know, I started out this podcast um you know, a long time ago and it's hard to believe that we are like now surpassing our 100th episode uh with you know tons of knowledge we've had amazing guests so big thanks go out to all of our guests big thanks go out to my team um you know they've been on the episodes they're the ones that actually put these things together um you know from you know from liam and andrea to jay to to rick to matt to like we've got a whole team of like almost 20 people now behind the scenes uh you know making these um making these videos editing them and sharing them with you guys so here's what i wanted to share with you a little bit about today for if you're listening in on this no bullshit podcast for the first time i want to just tell you a little bit about why i created this no bullshit podcast why did i create profit for contractors and I want you to stay tuned to this because what I'm going to do is I'm only going to, you know, talk for the next, you know, five or 10 minutes here on, on those topics, but I'm going to be bringing to you the top 10. It's almost like, I almost want to call them uh, the, the, the 10 commandments. They're not the official 10 commandments. Nobody take offense to this, but there are top 10 clips uh, that we, you know, we've gone through, you know, the hundred plus episodes and we've taken out of there the top 10 little one minute training clips for you guys and insights and principles. So you get to sort of, you know, take, you know, years worth of, of uh, podcasts and watch them, watch the clips, get some really quick wins, get some no bullshit insights on how you can improve your contracting business. So stay tuned. I'm going to wrap this up in, in, in just, uh, you know, a little over five or 10 minutes now, but let me just talk to you a little bit about why did I like, how did I come up with this name, the no bullshit podcast for contractors? Well, I'll tell you why, because there's a lot of bullshit out there. There's a lot of people out there that, you know, they get on their podcasts and, or they're sharing information and they're really, they're, they're really focusing their efforts around marketing. They're really focusing their efforts solely on getting a lead or getting a prospect to come to them. Um, not that I oppose of, of that happening on our end, but the main reason I put this podcast together because I was sick and tired of lis listening to podcasts that were just full of shit, right? They were, you know, telling the listener, you know, 
as if they were giving them a piece of insight when in reality they weren't really giving them anything tangible something that they could actually take away and use and apply i'm going to actually in the next five or so minutes here uh share with you some insights that you can actually apply no bullshit uh today before you watch these the highlight reel um but it's really about no bullshit right we talk about the realities of situations we talk about the reality of what contractors go through um we focus heavily on getting you guys more freedom more control and more money that's one of the three top reasons we think you got into business for in the first place and um and that's what the podcast is about is about giving you guys tangible real things real strategies that you can take and and put into action not in a year not in six months not in three months but like literally right after the podcast or even in some cases during the podcast so listening to future episodes it's, it's no bullshit we're going to give you some tangible uh, results again i'm going to be sharing one of those in just a minute or two now why did i start prof for contractors well look at here a really crash course on my journey um, I had my own automation business. Um, I came home late uh, for the thousand, thousandth time. Um, and there's my wife sitting on the couch and, and there's my, you know, my, my daughter on her lap and there's my son on, on the lap of the babysitter. And I'm late again, supposed to be home at five o'clock and I'm home at seven. And man, I, that was my life, right? It, it was just, my business was running me. I wasn't running it. Um, I was just going from job to job to job. I couldn't turn it off at all. I, I just, even when I was present, even when I was physically there with my family, I couldn't really be there mentally. I was always thinking about the business, always thinking about, okay, what do I got to do tomorrow? What, what material do I need to order? How am I going to keep my team busy? You know, how am I going to land the next job? How am I going to get enough cash flow to pay the bills, the, to pay the guys, the crews, the suppliers? And it just went on and on and on. And what I realized really quickly, and it hit me that evening, was I ran upstairs, jumped in the shower because I was just com completely dirty with grease and, and dirt and what have you. And I turned on the shower, jumped in super quick. You know, it hadn't warmed up at that point in time. It was like a cold shower, literally a cold shower. And it hit me and I asked myself, what the fuck am I doing? Like, what am I doing? You know, um, this is not the life I wanted for my family. This is not the life I wanted for me. And I was building automation lines, really complicated automation lines and uh, for breweries, for potato packaging companies and things of that nature. And um, it hit me. I was like, how is it that I can build these automation lines? It's really complex and got this big process to them and map it out and plan it out. And yet I can't run my own contracting business and, and get it to run without me and profitably get my profits to pay for my freedom. And it just hit me. I was like, well, if I can automate a, a really complex uh, you know, automation line why don't i automate my business and that's what i did i audited my business i aut automated my business i broke down every single process and i you know over a decade of, of of having this business i was able to get the business run without me and you know the rest is history and you know i then sold the business got out of that and i didn't know what to do with myself and my buddy said to me you know, andrew why don't you do what you've done for us and again as you guys know a lot of contractors hanging with contractors and, you know, I was helping them with all these insights and templates and tools and systems and policies and procedures and, and um, you know, and they said to me, why don't you do this as a living? And at the time, this is going back, guys, like almost 15, 20 years ago, before there was any form of coaching or business coaching, especially for the trades. And I decided, you know, hey, if I can do this for my buddies, I can maybe do this for other people. And that's when you know, my business was primarily referrals. I would do, you know, help one business and the next business and the next business and leap forward, uh, you know, to today. We've, we're, we're, we've hit our milestone of, oh, you know, our hundredth podcast. Um, you know, tens of thousands of people are following us and I've got a whole team of people behind me. Um, I've systemized that business as well. And, you know, I do this mainly because it's a lot of fun. I do this mainly to help you guys. And so that's sort of my journey. If you're ever interested, how did I come to, you know, um, to having this, this business? And I call it, I call it profit for contractors because I really believe that your profits can pay for your freedom. The profits that you make, you know, can give you the freedom because then you can hire people to do the things that you don't want to do. You can hire people so you can move up the contractor's ladder of success that I call 
and, and get to the top of it and become a true champion CEO. You can get your profits to pay more, you know, to get you more control, put the right systems in place because you can afford to pay for those systems. They get you to make more money and live the lifestyle that you want. So that's a little bit of the history of the podcast, a little bit of the history of Prof for Contractors. And let me just give you this little tip, okay? This little insight. It's so critical for you to reflect, like I'm reflecting right now, on the journey. It's so important for you to reflect every single day. Take a moment, and this is my little tip for you. If the moment is in first thing in the morning, if it's at the end of the day, and just reflect on the previous day and reflect on the day that's about to happen. To just ask yourself, like, what's, what's one thing that I've done to move myself, you know, towards becoming a champion CEO, towards my business being a, you know, a, a profitable, you know, machine that can run without me. What is it that, you know, what's the one thing that, that I did in the previous day or, and, or what's the one thing that I'm going to do today to move my business forward? Why? Because one little step, you think about it, we got 365 days in the year. That means we got like, you know, I almost look, look at it like 365 games, right? Where, where every single day, if we just move that needle ever so suddenly, Small little changes will give you massive, massive results at the end of the day. But you've got to recognize those changes, okay? You've got to recognize your progress. And too often we get sucked into all the things that went wrong. We get sucked into, you know, all the things that, that we don't have versus what are the things that we do have? And I think that one of the biggest things that's helped me get to where I'm at today is no matter how down I am, no matter how much I'm struggling, I always take a moment to be grateful. You know, whether that's being grateful for my family, whether that's being grateful for, you know, being a dad, you know, not, not being the perfect dad, not being the perfect husband, but being, you know, what's the, what's the one thing that I've done today to be a great dad? What's the one thing I've done today to, to be a great husband? And what's the one thing that I've, or the one thing that I've done to move the business forward? It's not about doing a ton of things, guys, all at once. It's about being consistent with you moving forward, consistent with you moving you know, down that pathway of, you know, getting off the tools, getting out of the trench, you know, being a great manager, you know, becoming a great leader, becoming a true champion CEO and taking your business, but just as importantly, and even more importantly, taking your life to the next level. Enjoy the clips, guys. Enjoy the highlight reel. Enjoy all those, you know, 10 uh, insights and principles and tactics and strategies that you're going to um, you know, get uh, access to in uh, starting right now. See you on the flip side. If you're out on if you're out on jobs and you're quoting, like have that thing either on your phone, you know, either put it into a spreadsheet, have it with you all the time, so you're using the right multiplier for the right margin. Okay, I'd hate for you to be thinking you're making profit and yet you're just at break even or below break even. The, 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 the like big no no. Okay, it doesn't matter how well you guys do the job. It doesn't matter how good your clients are. Okay, it just doesn't matter if you don't price your jaws properly. You are screwed. All right. Okay. Um, next, next was uh, make sure you're tracking your jaws, progressing to profit on a regular basis. Last one is make sure you're using the right data in the right formulas in the right. Way. The mindset part of it is is examining the stories you tell yourself or the stories we tell ourselves that limit us that's the main thing it's like if i'm a coach I, so i do one-on-one -on -one coaching as well i have to make sure my mindset is open enough to see that there are hundreds of people that i could work with on a monthly basis if i really put the time in just to, to uh to get the you know to get in front of them to have them know who i am etc examining the story that you're telling about wherever you're at whether that's there's no one out there there's no one good out there um i've exhausted all the resources and be, just be curious about whether or not that's a story whether or not that's true do you know that 100 percent? have you tried everything if you're hiring somebody okay and here's the three things right when we're hiring them again i got to make sure you stay focusing on on the points we got to focus on just really quickly 
we got to focus in on number one is their attitude next in priority this is a whole discussion okay but i'm just touching on it need to focus number one on their attitude number two and their fit with the team and last is their is their skill set not that it's it carries the least amount of weight but they as a licensed industrial controls electrician or a licensed residential person they should already have the skill set and you should have already tested them for that that's the easiest thing to check off the boxes the hardest thing is their attitude and their fit with the team and we need to indoctrinate them for success, okay? So use those tools, Trello, Google Sheets, or just a bloody whiteboard, okay, with a bunch of sticky notes, and you're gonna be so much further ahead when it comes to um, what technology you use and, and how to set the, up the right expectations, right? Setting the right expectations, guys, comes throughout this whole... Getting control of my time. Bingo. Yeah. Did you hear the word he used, everybody? Then I'm gonna shut up and let Dusty talk about this. He didn't say their fucking time. He didn't say everybody else's time. You're, everybody might be like, yeah, of course. He said his time. Yeah, his time. And you guys might be like, I still don't get it. Like, of course you got to get control of your time. No, no. His time as the CEO. What do I mean by that, Dusty? I think in one of your videos there, you said uh, if you don't uh, control your time, everyone else will fill your schedule for you. And uh, that that really uh, hit home with me, and uh, I got thinking about that, and it was it was. I mean, you you answer that phone, and you're just chasing the calls. You're chasing. I need you here. I need you there. Then you're jumping around. You you're getting nothing done. I mean, you're you're running for everyone else, and there's no structure. And by the t at the end of the day, you've got nothing done. How important is your image on social media? When we started with you, we didn't really have a social presence no. at all. No. And, and then when we started to make it a priority, we thought, again, is this really going to make a change? Once we started doing it, I kid you not, everyone that called, how did you get our number? Oh, I Googled you. Then we do reviews. Then we have potential uh, new hires. They see us on social media. And then all of a sudden they see who we are, how we treat our team. They want to deal with people who are honest. And sometimes we'll help clients over the phone and they'll save, we'll save them a service call just because we can. And they're like, wow, yeah. thank you so much. I said, listen, we're not here just to make, you know, the almighty dollar. We're here to run a business. And at the end of the day, we want our clients to feel safe in their homes. Things like working on your business is like working on, let's say like your hiring and your hiring systems and your marketing for hiring and right. right and your, all your, all your, you know, interview onboarding, everything, right? That's like working on the business. Or for a lot of guys, right, like actually like sitting down and looking at your numbers and learning how to price, right? Like mm -hmm. it's actually working on the business because it's something that's going to give you like long-term value versus working in. It's just like, you're just doing that thing. It's like doing a task. You do it, right? It's like a one-to-one -one ratio, of like for like working on the tools, right? Like essentially, it's, it's essentially an hourly job. Absolutely. Right? You, you're doing, right? Or working in would be, you know, driving around getting materials, right? You're not really bringing any long-term value yeah. to the company. So the question is, which one of these businesses would you pick? Would you pick a $3 million business at 10% contracting business? Would you pick a $2 million business at 15% net profit? Or would you pick a million dollar business at 30% net profit? And that's a very important question to think about. And before Patty mm -hmm. answers it, okay, I, I want you to understand that What's the most important thing that we're trying to accomplish here? Okay. So Patty, what, how would you answer that? Would it be the A, the B or the C? It'd be the C. Why, why, and, and why, why would you pick the million dollar business at 30 points? Because that's where you know, your profits, you're making, you're making your money. Yeah, you're making your money and you're keeping your money. People were interesting back then because, you know, we didn't know any better. So you brought on people that you just knew, right? Which, you know, sometimes can work out and sometimes could not work out. But, uh, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to money, you, you didn't know any better. you living in fear is an awful thing. And I think that's, that's what, if anything that can come out of any of this is that as you talk about freedom all the time is living in fear of money is probably, it's like being in prison, right? And uh, once you can just get momentum in that way and, and the power that you can, once you start actually making profits and how you can compound them is just, it's life-changing and the, the low, the stress levels alone um, 
be honest with you, if we ran things the way we did back then, I'd be dead in five years, right? Because you know that you'd be have a heart attack. So it, it, that's probably the most powerful thing. Let's say you've got a service department and let's say that you've got a construction department. You can actually break out what the break even point is. In other words, what the fixed expenses are separately for the service crews, right? And department, i.e., you know, the service trucks, there's like two service trucks, there's two guys on it, you know, basically takes up, you know, 20% of our admin person's time. You can figure out what the fixed expenses are for that type of work. And notice how that's very different than like, you know, construction department, which has got like maybe 20 trucks or five trucks and a whole, and, and a much bigger team and a much bigger overhead. This is crucial to figure out. And it's going to be what? Is it going to be the same for every single one of you guys? No, it's going to be different. This is the difference between becoming a champion CEO, okay? A champion CEO at pricing your job. The majority of contractors out there have never been taught how to run a business. And the reality is that most contractors, because they don't know how to run a business, because they haven't been coached, because they haven't been given the principles, they haven't been given the tools, the training, 90% of those contractors out there suck at being a business owner. And because they suck at being a business owner, they suck at putting their business in a controlled state. You guys getting that? A players want to work in a culture that you know, promotes and recognizes A players. But most of these contractors in some form of chaos, they're not communicating properly to their A players. They're not you know, telling their A players how to win. Those A players will, will, will switch who they're working for in a freaking drop of a hat if they are able to find a place that provides all of those things that we just talked about and more. Thanks so much, everybody, for all those that have been listening to us this whole time that have been, you know, that have been, uh, you know, dealing with and be, being an abundant mindset to give back to the community. And again, thanks for listening for us. My dream is that in some form or fashion, either this podcast or the previous podcast or the podcasts that are coming up are going to help you in some form or fashion that to move that needle to move you just closer and closer and closer to your dreams and aspirations. And I will see you on the flip side. And that's it for another no bullshit podcast for contractors. Hey, Rockstar, I hope you enjoyed that one. And if you did like this one, join our private Facebook group, Profitable Contractors Association. It's one of the biggest communities for contractors with over 10,000 members where you get the latest insights to help you delegate, dominate, and deliver so you can take your contracting business to a whole nother level.